Revelation 6 verse 12, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and, lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6 verses 12-17 describes a great earthquake that will shake the earth and cause the sun to turn black and the moon to turn red. It also speaks of the stars falling from the sky and the heavens rolling up like a scroll. This is a powerful image of destruction and chaos, and it is easy to see why it has captured the imaginations of so many people over the years. Another famous passage from Book of Revelation is the description of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse. These horsemen represent conquest, war, famine, and death, and they are said to ride forth to bring about the end of the world. This Bible passage is often interpreted as a warning about the dangers of war and conflict, and it has been cited as a justification for pacifism and nonviolent resistance. Matthew 24 verses 6 to 8 says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. This passage is telling us that the end times will be marked by widespread conflict and suffering, but that these events are merely the beginning of a much larger process. Another important sign of the end times is the rise of false prophets and false messiahs. Matthew 24 verse 24 warns, For false messiahs and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. This passage suggests that there will be people who claim to be messengers of God or even the Messiah himself, but who are actually working to deceive and mislead people. We should take heeds, and not be misled because this people are already in the world. One of the most events described in the Bible is the Day of the Lord. This day is often depicted as a time of judgment and punishment, when God will finally settle accounts with humanity and determine who will be saved and who will be damned. Isaiah 13 verses 6-13 describes the day of the Lord as a time of darkness and destruction, when the earth will be shaken and the stars will fall from the sky. This Bible passage is telling us that the day of the Lord will be a time of great upheaval and chaos, but that it will ultimately lead to a new order of things. Another famous passage about the day of the Lord is found in 1 Thessalonians 5 verses 2-3, which says, For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, Peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly, as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. This Bible passage tells us that the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly, and that many people will be caught off guard and unprepared for its arrival. So, every born-again Christian should be prepared, so that, it will not come unaware to you. Another important concept in the Bible's prophecies about the end times is the Great Tribulation. This period is described as a time of intense suffering and persecution, when every believers will be tested and many will be martyred for their faith. Revelation 7 verse 14 tells us about the Great Tribulation as a time when a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, will stand before the throne and before the Lamb. This passage suggests that the Great Tribulation will be a time of intense spiritual warfare, but that ultimately many people will be saved. 
The Bible's prophecies about the end times also include the second coming of Christ. This event is described as the return of Jesus to earth, when he will establish his kingdom and reign as king over all the earth. Acts 1 verse 11 describes the second coming of Christ saying, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This passage suggests that the second coming of Christ will be a visible, physical event that all people will be able to witness. Another famous passage about the second coming of Christ is found in 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 16-17, which says, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. This passage suggests that the second coming of Christ will be a time of resurrection and reunion, when believers will be reunited with their loved ones who have died. It is good to tell yourself, I must be among the numbers, nothing will make me to miss that day. As we live in uncertain times, these prophecies may give us hope and encouragement to persevere through difficult circumstances. They remind us that no matter what happens in this world, God is ultimately in control and will one day bring about a new heaven and a new earth. Please subscribe, like this video, and drop your comments.